this section, I will talk a bit more about the relationship between distributed systems and computer networking. So in distributed systems, generally any computing device that is involved in the system, we call a node. So a node could be a phone or a laptop or a server in a data center or any of the other things we talked about earlier. And the fundamental abstraction of distributed systems, the communication abstraction, is that one node can send a message to another node. That's it. That's the entire basis of distributed system. One node sends a message to another node. And this uh, captures all of the possible modes of communication that can happen. Now, in practice, of course, there are lots of different types of network and different ways of getting a message from one node to another. Um, so examples of that would be um, if you're at the university, you will be probably using uh, university provided Wi-Fi or college provided Wi-Fi. Uh, if you're at home, you probably have a home internet connection. Uh, if you're sitting in a coffee shop, you will probably be using the Wi-Fi there. If you're out and about in town, you will probably be using some cellular data on your phone. And that's only like the network that you connect to directly. On top of the those, there are the backbone networks in, that form the internet. And there are lots of different types of network operated by all sorts of different companies. Some of those go uh, via cables, copper cables. Some of them are fiber optic cables. Some of them uh, go underneath the sea. Some of them go via satellite and so on. All sorts of ways of getting messages from A to B. In addition, there are all sorts of physical communication mechanisms, such as electrical pulses on a wire, uh, radio waves or lasers going down fiber optic cables, or even hard drives in a van. What? Hard drives in a van? That's not a network connection. Well, I will argue that this is also a mechanism from getting messages from A to B. So if what you have is a very large amount of data that you want to send to somebody else, maybe to transfer it to a different data center, then actually sending all of that data over the internet can be kind of slow and expensive, and it can actually make more sense to load all of the data onto a bunch of hard drives, load the box of hard drives into a van, drive the van to the destination, and when it gets to the destination, you can then download all of the uh, data back off the hard drives uh, and store them in whatever system they need to be stored in. And this people do this in practice, actually, and Amazon Web Services, for example, which is a big provider of, of data center services, they actually have this service where you can rent a box of hard drives from them and it'll come as a, in a career service and uh, you can load all of your data onto it. It takes about 50 terabytes or so uh, on one of these boxes and uh, send it back. And so, of course, this is a very slow form of networking because it might take a day or a couple of days for the data to arrive, but it is also quite a high bandwidth form of networking that is, you can transfer large quantities of data. And I would argue that from a distributed systems point of view, this is just another messaging channel. It's another way of getting a message from A to B. The distinction is just the latency and the bandwidth of those different networking channels. So latency varies hugely depending on what sort of network you're looking at. Um, within the devices on your home Wi-Fi, for example, or within servers in the same data center, you probably get like a millisecond, maybe less than a millisecond, depending on how congested the network is. Um, latency, that is the time that it takes to communicate from one device to another. Uh, if you're going over the internet and you're talking to a server that is located on a different continent, then it's probably more like on the order of 100 milliseconds. Of course, hard drives in a van will probably take a day or a couple of days. Um, but still, you know, it's just another networking channel. In terms of bandwidth, this varies hugely. Like a uh, 3G phone uh, might have like a megabit per second if you've got a good signal. It might be more like 100 kilobits per second if you've got a poor signal. Um, home broadband might be like 10 megabits. Of course, it varies very much how close you are to the, the next provider, um, whether you have fiber and so on. Um, Roughly estimating the bandwidth of hard drives in a van, well, if you take one of these boxes and it takes a couple of days to do the whole loading data onto it, getting it to the other place, getting the data back off it again, it, you can probably estimate it as roughly being a gigabit per second or something like that. Uh, if you use one box, of course, you can send multiple boxes, in which case you can increase that number. Those are just very rough numbers, but just sort of to give you an idea of the order of magnitude 
that we're talking about with these. So I will now like to show you an example of one concrete distributed system, which is a system that you use every day. And that system is the web. And so the web we can now analyze through a distributed systems lens and see what actually happens uh, when you load a website in a web browser. And so what happens there is that we have two communicating entities. First of all, you've got the client, which is the web browser running on your computer or your phone. And you've got the server, which is usually located somewhere in a data center. And when the client wants to display a web page, it makes a request. And so a request is just a message that gets sent over the network. And that request is targeted at a particular server and it contains the path of the URL that you're trying to load. So you notice in a URL, you have the HTTP, maybe S double slash, then comes the server name, and then from the single slash onwards uh, is the path. And so the, the bit before that first slash is uh, the server name, which is going to be the destination where we send the message to. And what follows after that is the path, which is then contained within the message that we send to that destination. And so that message, uh, if you want to load a web page, we call that a GET request and it contains the path and the server then will respond with the contents of that web page. And so that is probably an HTML page if it's just a plain web page, but it could also be an image or it could be a video file or it could be a PDF document or, or anything like that. And so um, what we have here is a simple protocol consisting of two messages, a request from the client to the server and a response from the server back to the client containing the data that the client asked for. So I'd like to now give you a little demo of what this actually looks like. And so, uh, of course, you know what a web browser looks like. Here I've loaded the course web page and I can scroll up and down. And I can now record the messages that are sent and received over the network using a, a network capture tool. So here I'm going to use a tool that's called Charles and I'm going to put it into recording mode. It's going to start recording and then I'm going to go here and just hit reload on the website. And so here we go, we've loaded the page again. And now I go back to Charles and we can see that we've now accumulated a whole bunch of requests. So each line here is one request message that was made from the web browser to the server. And it also contains the response that was sent back from the server to the client. And so here we can see, for example, this um, the first request here was for this path here, which is the, the, the path on the web browser. You can see here in the URL that matches up with this path. Uh, you can see it's a GET request to load a particular website. Um, you can see a bunch of information like the user agent here, for example, is uh, essentially the version of the web browser that I'm using. So it identifies the client software version. Here, this accept header, this is uh, indicates what file types the web browser understands. So it understands HTML and various other image formats and stuff like that. Then there's a whole bunch of other stuff here, like how it, what sort of compression it accepts, what sort of language I speak and so on. So all sorts of stuff here. And what you see in this panel here is the request message. And then in the lower panel here, you see the response message. And here, the response message to this here contains some HTML. Um, and you can see like the, the whole content of the HTML page. I can scroll down, it's a bit boring. Okay, and we can have a look at other requests here as well. So you can see this here, this looks like it's uh, a picture that it's downloading and etc. Here's some CSS, some style files and so on. So what we have is this very simple request response uh, messaging uh, protocol at the conceptual level. So at the conceptual level here, uh, at the distributed systems level, we're just talking about one message, one response. Now, what happens at the underlying physical network level is a little bit more complicated. And so uh, we can look at what happens on the physical level by using a different network capture tool. So I'm going to use a tool here that's called Wireshark. And this will, this will actually capture, uh, rather than capturing at the HTTP level, capturing the request and response, it's going to capture the individual network packets. So let's see what happens here. I'll start recording and then I'll go back to the web browser and I'll reload again and go back here and hit stop. And here we now see, oh, a lot of activity again. And so 
here in Wireshark, every line in this table is a single network packet. And so here you can see that uh, there's a packet sent from one IP address to another IP address. So the 192.168, that is the device, that is the IP address of my laptop on which I'm recording this right now. This 128.232, etc., that is the uh, server, that is the name of the web server um, that of the computer lab website that I'm connecting to. And so here you can see it's connecting using the TCP protocol. Don't worry too much about that. You'll learn a lot more about TCP in the computer networking course. Um, but the bottom line of this is there's a lot of back and forth you can see. And then here there's some uh, encryption that happens because it's an HTTPS connection. And you can see there that here's the name of the, the website that I'm connecting to. Uh, the server name that I'm connecting to, and so on. And so on the physical level, what's happening here on the network is that we have all of these uh, network packets going back and forth. And the reason that we have lots of packets is that there's a maximum size of each packet. And you can see here in this column, it has the size, the length in bytes of each packet. And you can see that the length only goes up to about 1500 bytes. Uh, here another with 1500 bytes, but there are none that are bigger than that. And that's because networks have this maximum size of a packet. And so if you want to send a message that is greater than the size of a single packet, you have to split it up into multiple packets. And this is exactly what the TCP protocol does. So the TCP, HTTP runs on top of TCP. Um, so HTTP has this request message, response message paradigm but a request might be bigger than a single network packet and a response is quite likely bigger than a single network packet as well. So then HTTP uses TCP underneath and TCP breaks down these big messages into small network packets that are small enough that the network can deliver them. And then on the recipient side, TCP puts all of the network packets back together again to give us one large chunk of bytes. And so this is, uh, this is now like an important thing to keep in mind in distributed systems. When we're talking about messages being sent and received, we're not talking about individual packets because a message may well be bigger than a single network packet. And so that message then has to be broken down into small network packets. So the, net, the message is really a higher level conceptual um, object that gets sent back and forth uh, between, between two uh, nodes. And how exactly this gets broken down to, to the, in, on the packet level, that's something that we leave to the computer networking people. So for distributed systems point of view, we can just assume that we have this mechanism through which we can send these requests and these responses here. And we don't care too much about the details of how this is actually physically represented in terms of network packets. We just assume that we have this communication mechanism.